кто ищет, тот находит. He who seeks shall find. Yandex is the main search engine of the Russian-speaking internet. Its daily audience reaches 25 million users. The yearly income is about 9 billion rubles. The Yandex success story is one of the risky high technology business when the team at the start has nothing except the budding technology, intuition and perseverance. The future founder of Yandex saw his first PC in the late 80s at the age of 24. Who knows if Yandex would have come into being if Arkady Valish hadn't met his first business partner. I just wanted to study English and I was looking for a native speaker. And a friend of a friend of mine introduced me to a young man, a student of Russian literature at the Pushkin Institute, who was looking for some additional earnings. When leaving Boston, I put a Radio Shack computer catalog into my student's backpack. Arkady saw it, and it became a subject of an interesting conversation. Arkady and Robert founded the ComTech company and started to import personal computers to the Soviet Union, something very unusual and fancy at the time. Very soon, the mathematician Arkady Volosh organized a small group of programmers at ComTech. This is the house where the word Yandex came into being, and the Yandex program was written. We were sitting at the third floor, and there was a deli here with very delicious bread and cheese. From time to time we went there, when we were working at nights, and it was very helpful for us. According to the data from Live Internet, Yandex holds 64% of the Russian search engine market. What has given this company such a leap to development? The original idea of searching for information in Russian was the cause of success. By the early 90s, several search routine programs in the World Wild Web have already been written. But they were not convenient for Russian users. English words are not declined or conjugated, but the Russian ones are. Only Russian nouns have six cases in the singular form and six cases in plural. Pronouns and adjectives vary in grammatical genders. Verbs vary in tenses. The challenge was how to teach computers to understand the Russian language. Comtech programmers found a solution – morphological search. It took into account all forms of the words. Comtech financed an analysis of web searching with no clear idea of how to commercialize it. It was a risk. And Comtech became a venture capital investor for Yandex. Venture capital investment, granting means to young companies without pledge, in exchange for a share in these companies. Yandex, I would say, is a classic venture capital arrangement. Classic even because the capital was American, and the founders considered that as a venture project. I suppose, even thus, Yandex worked his way up and became a successful company. Five men with beards are sitting around inventing something that I do not understand, and something is to come out of this? Arkady told me, Robert, don't worry, sometime something very interesting will come out of this. The new tool had to be tested, the Bible brought some help. Look at that! I have not seen those in 10 years. Great! These old diskettes hold a prototype of what we now know as Yandex. The verse in the Holy Scripture permanently coincide with and refer to anagogy. Navigation in anagogy was invented in the 12th century, when the alphabetical reference of all words used in the Bible was published. But only in the end of the 20th century did programmers make the search almost immediate. The concordance for the Old and the New Testament, in fact, there is a version of a searching system. Let's take the word groom. We see the word in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 10. And here's the quote of this verse containing the word. 
In modern searching systems, these are called snippets. The same, but more handy, is the Yandex search. The programmers base their search index on the Bible. One must just enter the word, and the references to all verses appear in the screen. Here, for example, is the groom of Isaiah 6110. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation, and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. The word Yandex turned out to be a successful invention by itself. It is easy to remember and safely patented. But the search engine could have taken another name, for example, that of a snack bar. There was a deli in the ground floor, just one of the first Western-style delis. It was called something like somewhat bistro. I don't remember. I suggested bistro. No, this wouldn't work. One night I spent an hour and I made a list of names, about 15 names, and the first was Yandex, because you can make a Russian word out of index, but you can't make one out of search. So I toyed with the word index and came up with Yandex. The principle of searching on the Internet has remained the same for many years. The user enters the word in the homepage window and gets back a page of links to websites. The list of sites appears on a screen in an order determined by special programs called robots or spiders. They travel in the web, view pages, visit the links, assign an index to every word, and keep it on the server of the search engine. With each search query, the search engine looks not over the entire Internet, but only in its database. By the time Yandex entered the market with its new technology, Ronet, the Russian Internet, was already well covered by the search engines AltaVista and Rambler. But their search engines were based on English, and their robot spiders were not able to find all the pages where Russian words were encountered in all of their variety. The Yandex search engine allowed much more information to be found. The developers tried to sell it to the leading Russian portals, but they did not hurry to buy it. Why spend money when users can already find find everything they need. In the mid-90s, the amount of information on Runet made up only a few gigabytes and could fit the modern memory stick. We offered different companies opportunities to invest, to buy Yandex, for example. We were ready to accept $15,000, and they would get the programmers as much as we were, and the project, but nobody offered. No, no, no. Rambler, the acknowledged leader of Russian language search engines of the 90s, was among those who were not interested in Yandex. Then Comtech launched its own website, and thus appeared Yandex.ru. This was the place where programmers materialized their ideas and in due time tested the Bible computer reference book. The size of the Russian-speaking Internet grew rapidly, and the number of users of the Yandex search engine along with it. Just the morphological search turned out terrific urgent for search in the Russian segment of Internet. Internet as a media business as working with a large audience, it was very unusual for us. We used to work, let's say, on the B2B market. One company supplies another and it doesn't deal with the audience. We now had to deal with the tens of millions of users. It is like appearing on stage in front of an audience. Yandex did get the audience, but its managers didn't know how to turn a profit from this. It became clear that the popular search engine feels tight as part of a computer selling company. Investors were running around Russia with burning eyes and looking for the startups. Well, let's say and ask where, 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 where we can throw money. Million, million, three, five, fifteen, how much do you want? Come on, let's start. In 2000, Yandex split off from its parent company. The newly established company had an estimated value of 15 million dollars. According to market standards of that time, this was a lot of money. One third part of the company was bought by Runet Holdings Investment Fund. Yandex has got considerable tools for development. In 2002, the company was profitable for the first time thanks to technology of user-targeted advertising. That is the advertising that appears along with a response to the user's search query. The efficiency of such advertising and profits have grown along with the popularity of the global network. In mid-60s I was a kid. Once we visited some of my mom's friends. The grown-ups gathered around a pink and brown colored box with two twisting bobbins. The box produced sad, mournful songs. I started to pull my mom. What are we doing here? Let's go home. My mom replied, let me listen to Akujava. 
I thought that this box with bobbins is called Aku Java. Enlightenment came later when I found myself in the radio cabin of a stadium and saw a big machine on the floor. I wanted to show my knowledge and said, Oh, what a big Aku Java you've got! The radio operator opened his eyes wide and then started to laugh. For Aku Java is the famous Bart's name. The same happens to Yandex. Let's ask Yandex. What does Yandex say? Let's look in Yandex. Competing with Google and Rambler forced the company not to limit itself with the search. Now Yandex offers its own email, postcard and photo services, weather forecasts, its own unique payment system and the main assistance to the country's drivers, traffic information service for major Russian cities. The average age of people working in Yandex is 29. Among programmers it's even less. Accordingly, we have people who have never seen the Internet without Yandex. They believe that the Internet has always existed, and Yandex, of course, too, has always existed. Life in this virtual world is supported today by 2,000 employees. Each service is created by several departments, which occupy the whole floor, as, for example, Yandex Traffic Jams Department. The size of the company is so big that employees risk getting lost in their own office building. We've got 45 meeting rooms in this building, and we faced a serious problem how to name them all. And we thought out the following system. The first figure is the number of the floor, and then a word that is associated with this figure. Something like seven dwarfs, seven nannies, seven forty, and so. This meeting room on the fifth floor refers to the quote from a well-known Russian song about football match when Argentina defeated Jamaica with a score of five to zero. The Yandex office is something in between an entertainment center and a flat. You can move through the corridors on a scooter, and here it is allowed to have a nap in a hammock or relax with a drum set. Despite its success, Yandex has constantly remained on guard. Giant Google, which has already captured the French, German, Spanish and Portuguese parts of the network and which has already invaded Runet, is hot on its heels. To fight with Yandex, the American Google had to master morphological search. People came with also very serious technologies, at least as strong as ours. And it was not clear if we would survive or not. We started to lose market share, and we had to completely remake the company, to alter the search and to look at everything differently. In 10 years, the search market has grown and changed decisively. Nobody dares to get involved in the competition between Yandex and Google in the Runet anymore. Now, to create a new search engine having just a successful idea is not enough. Now this requires an investment of billions. Any technological project besides the idea needs the right time. If the technology is already implemented, if the companies that have already done the same thing and they are already successful, one can become successful, but that's far more difficult. Meanwhile, in the global ranking of search engines, Google, Yahoo and the Chinese Baidu are still holding the top three places. In late May, the Russian company launched its own search engine for foreign language sites, and it is now ready to compete with foreign search engines on their territory. And nonetheless, the overall revenue growth of the search engines gradually slows down. The young ambitious companies are assaulting the niches of microblogging and social network applications. In a few years, any of them will become the flagship of a business, and who knows, with whom will then compete Twitter or Farmville. And this will be the subject of the other success stories.